Uh, another center is Kassel in the north of Hesse, where they found agate nearby, and the agate was uh, um, worked on in the Kassel workshop, but the, then sent to Augsburg and mounted there in the early 18th century into this beautiful early tea set, which is extremely rare, and we know only three uh, comparable examples. Also, this game board, which is upstairs, came from Kassel, and this is a portrait of the Landgrave uh, of Wilhelm, who um, set up the grinding mill, which is today in the Royal Collection of Denmark, but it was uh, too complicated to transport. And this is one of the questions very often you have setting up in exhibitions. There are simply pieces that can't travel, and even if the size, it's not very big, a foot or so, uh, even if the size is very manageable, but when the piece is in danger, you rather stay away because that is part of the responsibility. In Dresden, in Saxony, was, um, there was not only the invention of Meissen, um, of the porcelain uh, by Böttger, um, in Meissen, the town near Dresden, but uh, in Dresden he set up a grinding mill which was in operation only three years. And we have in the exhibition that cup and another one in shell form, and you see it's not polished, it's not finished. Um, this is one of the marvels. Again, it's in the green vault where these pieces are, and it's a national treasure it's, which is prevented from traveling. It is so thin that you see how the light comes through and it is very close to the forms that he would make in the so-called famous Meissen ceramic red stoneware. They did also um, this bust in Dresden, uh, designed by a sculptor with the name Hermann. It's, again, it's made in amethyst, which was so rare, amethyst that was found in uh, Saxony at the time, and uh, next to it is something that simply I had to show to you. Uh, again, it's a national treasure. It's not allowed to leave Germany, but it's a bath of Diana by uh, Johann Melchior Dinglinger from the first years of the 18th century. And Diana, the story is, of course, she gets uh, surprised by Acteon, a hunter, who comes with his dogs and he sees Diana naked bathing um, with other nymphs and then she uh, um, has him uh, changed into a deer and his own dogs uh, will tear him apart and you see how, how the action is going, only the head is left and you see how much movement goes in. The dog just jumps on it on the base here. So you have in a piece with a grind uh, agate bowl and some other semi-precious stones and enamel and ivory, you have a combination with the goldsmith's work which really uh, accomplished a piece of art of first quality. And at the time and today, it is still of the, one of the great treasures in Dresden. Uh, Dresden had also um, uh, alabaster, a carved um, alabaster object with um, the case it would be transported in. And then there was the first director of the Green Wall was a man with the name Tadel. And he went out and he collected um, specimens and he all labeled them. And this is uh, petrified wood, for example. This is the amethyst uh, from the quarry uh, where we saw the bust. And uh, he, over 250 different examples are today in the Green Vault. And he may have influenced his son-in-law, Johann Christian Neuber, who followed him as director of the Green Vault, who created these um, unusual table, which was a gift of Maria Theresia to a French uh, um, um, general um, who was 
responsible for the peace treaty of Teschen. That's why it's called the Teschen table. But here you have all these spe different specimens, and they are numbered. And it goes with it a, a leaflet, a small booklet, where all the numbers are lined up, and um, behind there is written where the stone came from. And if you look at the shape, it's nothing else like a blown up snuff box that uh, Neuper did. And he was extremely famous for that uh, kind of snuff boxes. But he also did notebooks. We have upstairs this wonderful notebooks with this mosaic of different stones showing uh, Maria Theresia and Louis XVI. But also, um, he did develop some patterns which look astonishingly modern, if, if you see it. And if you would just look at the pattern, um, you would wonder if this is not 1920 instead of 1780. He did also some monumental things, like this is all made in semi-precious stones. It's um, a fireplace for the Queen Vault. And from Dresden, it's only a small jump over to Berlin. Uh, there was uh, also a tradition in hardstone carving. You had Frederick the Great as a great patron. And um, he had very early on gout attacks. And this piece is made in crystal pass, a stone that was mined in Silesia. And um, supposedly, it protected the owner against um, gout, so he always had a piece with him. And he loved um, snuff boxes with diamonds, and when he died, they found in his rooms 99 uh, snuff boxes with diamonds, and only one uh, other was a golden box. And for each of these boxes, there were designs by Krüger, who was an artist in Berlin who gave the king different options, and uh, he was supposed to deliver um, every other month another box. And I just show you two, two more, because here you see how finely, thinly grind it is. It is almost like thin glass, and it's a marvel when they have survived. And there is another one in Agate, uh, it's called, in the description by Grüger, when he did this design, um, Fortress Agate. And if you look at the outlet, it almost looked like the wall of a fortress. And, but it is a natural um, crane in the stone. There are other centers. There was um, Copenhagen in Scandinavia. Um, and also there were... Uh, uh, Porphyry and um, other hardstone uh, mills and uh, deposits in Sweden, but uh, they did not belong to the Holy Roman Empire. And I thank you very much for coming. <laughs>